Hey, happy Saturday, everyone. This is Chris at Fatherly Phantom. Sorry for the delay in the showing, but uh, we've we've had life, we've had issues, we've had work, we've had kids, we've had all sorts of things go on. But I wanted to come on here today and get started with episode four of Better Call Saul, Hit and Run. So let's rock and roll. All right, so this was a really fun episode. I really enjoyed it a lot. It was kind of a more lighthearted episode, especially after the last one where we were heavily involved with Nacho. It was really deep. It was going crazy, uh, but I've really enjoyed it. So let's just go right through the the synopsis. I'm gonna I'm gonna shorten up these kind of episodes now so that we're we're not uh, going too long with with these episodes. Uh, so, hit and run. Kim meets Cliff Main at the coffee shop while, while Jimmy disguises himself as Howard. I thought him dressed as Howard was, was beautifully done. I thought it was really <laughs> quite funny, and I very much enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy takes his car, uh, and he's able to pick up Wendy from the motel. I don't know if you guys remember Wendy, but we, we saw her in Breaking Bad. She was the... Uh, the street worker that worked at the motel she, that really enjoys, you know, uh, <laughs> her root beers and everything. So uh, she picks up Wendy from the motel. Then they pretend to force her out of the car uh, while while they drive past Kim and, and Cliff and they're talking. And they make it appear as though Howard, you know, is using prostitutes <laughs> at that time. This whole, this whole plan that they have is really funny and I, I really enjoy it. I don't know why I really enjoy it, but I really enjoy them them doing all this stuff <laughs> um, to kind of get to Howard. You know how, and I guess you know at the same point, I feel really bad for Howard as well. You know because he's he he's gone through all this stuff too. He's seen Jimmy's brother die. You know his mentor and everything, and he he tried to make amends with Jimmy, and it was just. You know he's doing his best to to be a good guy as well. I remember when the the show first aired and everything. Better Call Saul, Howard's character was an asshole, and and that's what you you felt about him was was that he was an asshole. So, uh, but over the years his character has progressed, and you do actually feel something for this character, even though you know Jimmy and Kim are are definitely out to get him at this point. You know Jimmy and Kim are kind of going down a downward slope, whereas Howard is kind of going you know upward in his life trying to make improvements trying to grow as a person namaste and all that stuff um but but jimmy and kim they're they're on the opposite path and and this season we we are definitely seeing that and we're, we'll see more of that later on um so after being kicked out of the nail salon uh because you know jimmy uh saul has attracted so many new clients, so so much clientele. They're they were all over the place in the nail salon. He he's deciding that he has got to get a new office. So Jimmy scouts a location for a new office, and what does he find? The the same place that we saw in in Breaking Bad. It's like, but obviously it's not made up to look like it has in in Breaking Bad, but. It's the bones of that, and we're, we're finally seeing all the connective tissue coming together, uh, leading us into what we saw in Saul's character from Breaking Bad. So it's, it's really cool that we're, we're, we're tying up loose ends, we're seeing what's happening in this show. And so, while, the, while meeting a pro bono client, Kim again spots uh, the car that we actually saw in the last episode. Was it the last episode? I think it was two episodes back where we saw a car um, following Jimmy and Kim. And Kim again spots his car and confronts the occupants. Mike actually reveals uh, that the people following her to work uh, are from him. So they're, they're keeping an eye on him. He says that Lalo might be alive. Uh, Gus Fring thinks that he might be alive and that he's monitoring anyone that Lalo made contact with. So that's, that's Kim and Jimmy, obviously. So he, he wants to keep track on them. So he meets him in the diner. And I don't know if you guys have seen this really cool art, but this is the the art piece. It's not and one of the reasons I love that I have delayed this episode is because I was able to bring you the cool art for the episode hit and run on here. So you see that this really does shake up Kim's. Kim's visibly shaken, and with Jimmy at a potential location of his new office and and approves of it. Um, but Kim doesn't talk about um, her conversation with Mike to Jimmy, so she's keeping the secret from, from Jimmy. 
Uh, and so during this episode, Gus uses the neighboring home to connect to a tunnel and operates it as like a center of security area with his men as he's waiting for Lalo to make his move. I thought it was really cool. Really cool introduction to this episode. You see the couple on the bike. They're going through the neighborhood and they're like, ah, oh, that shade of red is crazy. I wonder why the HOA didn't didn't stop this. They've got something to say. And then you see them go into their house and they have all these security guards and everything in there monitoring stuff. And you realize that this is an area for, for Gus. And you see that later on when he goes through the tunnel of his home. To that he is well prepared i've got to say so it was really cool seeing all that and i gotta say for this episode i really enjoyed it and uh for for the the writer of this episode it was ann Cherkis. and who makes their directorial debut with this episode um and i was so awesome it was so awesome to see that it was raya seahorn kim wexler she was the one that actually and I'll pull it up here. Here we go. Kim Wexler made her directorial debut with this episode. So it's her first time directing as an actress. You know, and as an actor and actresses, I love to see them cross into directorial uh, roles in, in these shows, in these movies. I, th I think Bryce Dallas Howard is a great example in The Mandalorian as well as Book of Boba Fett. We saw her step up and she's doing a phenomenal job. Her dad too, Ron Howard, also stepped into the role as a director and, and found um, some some great things to direct and he has been stellar. I think it's, it, it's great whenever these actors do step into that role because they have a unique perspective. They know how to direct these actors, they've been in their place, and they are able to produce some really good content. Another thing I, I'm thinking about is Morgan Freeman, Freeman, Morgan Freeman, and uh, Tim Robbins. Same thing, you know, when they were first cast on Shawshank Redemption, they both have made directorial debuts. Uh, Frank Darabont, it was, was his first big director-led project was the Shawshank Redemption, so we were able to help him out through that process too, as actors and as directors too. So it actually improves the overall story, the overall thing that you're you're telling, the show that you're on. So I really loved it. Thought she did a phenomenal job. Hats off to you, Rhea Seahorn. You did an awesome job. I, I love your character in this, Kim Wexler. She is an amazing character. I absolutely love her as an actress. She's doing a phenomenal job. Can't say enough good things about her. Great episode, hit and run. And I'm going to give this episode, I'm probably going to give this episode a, uh, a 6 out of 10. Wasn't the my most favorite one so far. Episode 3 is, is probably my favorite so far. There was so much emotion in that. Seeing Nacho's story end and his, his character come to a close. And, and the weight that they, they gave to that was beautifully done. Uh, it was nice to get a sense of levity in this episode. I know that m episodes moving forward are going to have to have to be a little bit darker or a little bit more serious. So it was great to get that levity. It's great to get this side story about them them uh, trying to discredit Howard. I absolutely love that. So 6 out of 10 for me. Definitely did enjoy it, and I can't wait to see more of it. So that brings us to the end of this episode. What, what's been going on with my life? What's been going on with fatherly fandom? Um, so we were going to record an episode for Shawshank Redemption, but uh, lives got in the way. My, my uh, co-host, Matt, he has had to step up. He's lost some co-workers at his work, and so he's had to take on some extra shifts. He's been working some night shifts. I've been uh, putting in extra hours at work as well. I work the night shift at my job. I work at a blood bank. I'm a, I'm a scientist myself, if you didn't know. Um, and so I've had to put an extra time there. We are bringing up a new PHS system, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you don't want to hear all the ins and outs of that, but life gets in the way. But we do plan on recording that. We do plan on having that available at some point soon. We're both finishing up the, uh, the director's written script right now. It's a beautiful book. We've both um, read the audio book of the making of Shawshank Redemption, as well as gone into the, the book itself. Uh, Shawshank, um, Rita Hayworth, and the Shawshank Redemption. So that's going to be coming to you guys pretty soon. Um, both of us haven't watched Doctor Strange yet, so we haven't recorded anything for that as well. Again, just busy schedules, just going crazy. 
Uh, but what I, ha I have been reading lately, I'm preparing for Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I just got this book of Boo Radley's The Jedi Path. It is awesome. If you guys haven't seen it, haven't read stuff like that, they have one about bounty hunters as well as the Sith. And they actually have annotations throughout um, this from different characters in Star Wars like Yoda, Dooku, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, Anakin, even Darth Sidious makes little annotations in this book. So throughout the book you'll see little annotations like this and it's really fun to get those characters um, <laughs> perspectives whenever you're reading. So this is a, just a basic book about the Jedi where they supposedly came from, the different fighting styles like, you know, Form 2 Makashi, Form 3 Sorisu, where Obi-Wan was the master of Sorisu, uh, Form 5 Dimso, which is one that Anakin and Luke Skywalker mostly use on that. So I'm getting in, into that. I read the, the new comic, Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, and uh, the, the next issue for that comes out in June, so I think that's after the show hits. Uh, but this, this uh, comic, the first... Uh, the first issue of that comic was really good. It actually shows Obi-Wan as an old man. Um, and I think it's right before A New Hope. And he's writing down in his journals about his experiences, his life. So he remembers a time when he was a Padawan. And there was another Padawan there, a, a girl that was his friend and everything. And she actually leaves the order and, and goes after her dad because she has a bad feeling about him. Um, and so Obi-Wan, as a little Padawan... Um, decides to go after her and um, eventually catches up with her. Spoiler, if you haven't read it, if you don't want to read it, don't don't listen to this part. But she he eventually catches up with her and decides to let her go and he goes back to the, the Jedi Order himself. So it's really interesting to see that perspective. Like this character that we know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, is, um, ha has dealt with Jedis that have left the Order before, has dealt with rogue Jedis and things like that. Um, and... <laughs> Ultimately, he gets Qui-Gon Jinn as a master, this, this very rogue Jedi that uh, is more in tune with the living force rather than the politics that the Jedi Order have developed in the Old Republic. But uh, very cool stuff, reading all that, getting ready, prepping for Obi-Wan Kenobi. We will have um, a live watch party on that, so please join us for that. I'll be on here for the first, it's probably going to be like two hours for Obi-Wan Kenobi on here watching that. So I can't wait to do that. Can't wait to get on here and, and do that with you. We'll have Matt on on Sundays uh, talking about each episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, if you can't make it because of work, I'll, I'll do it do it alone. And uh, we'll do it live so you guys can give us your feedback as well. And as always, leave comments on this YouTube channel about uh, these episodes that you're watching. And I would these, these are recorded. And I know a lot of people watch these whenever they hit Netflix. So whenever this season of Better Call Saul hits Netflix, what I plan to do is re-release these so that you guys can actually watch them again. And uh, Hit and Run was really good. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know what you thought about uh, Rhea Seahorn directing this episode, her first directorial debut. So uh, let me know what you think and where you think these characters are leading. I really hope, I really do hope Kim Wexler gets out of the series unscathed and she has a happy life somewhere definitely hope that you guys notice i got a different background here uh i've moved rooms uh i i, I i'm so i don't know if you can see like this there's a there's a little bit of a door right there that's where the old old uh setup the old office was set up but i decided to move things around and this is the new location so uh exciting stuff i'm gonna paint uh, this back wall and everything. I'm gonna get some lightsabers on the side for some some ambient glow for the channel and everything for Fatherly Phantom. So this is it. All my fun stuff. I got the Mandalorian, Batman, Superman, all the all the stuff. I've got a uh, I've got Captain America's shield coming too. You know, and I've got my of course I've got my Superman mug. I don't know if you can see this, but I am a father. So dad, man, myth, legend. Since I am a dad, this is Fatherly Phantom. We're having fun here. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for joining. Please kick, click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button so you can see more of our content as it comes out. We're going to be doing a lot more in the future. I'm looking forward to all the crazy stuff that we do on this channel with all the different fandoms. We want to build up the fandoms and highlight all the good stuff. Kind of stay away from the negativity and, and whatnot. And just celebrate all these things that we're watching. So thanks again for joining. I'll see you next time here on Fatherly Phantom. Take care. Adios.